Hey everyone, Kyle once again, and welcome back to the next uh, movie review, back with the Steven Seagal directed video movies. So the next one I'll be doing is of Born to Raise Hell, from 2010, although it says uh, 2011 on the back of here though, but on 90 beats it's 2010, so it's 2010 I'll put it. So Born to Raise Hell, it's a, like with A Dangerous Man... It didn't. It's another one that didn't piss me off. I, I wasn't fully enraged by the movie. Like, Dangerous Man, it was just a, a rant, right? It wasn't a full-on rage rant, no. It was just like a... Like with this film, like, like with Dangerous Man, it was a meh movie. Meh. You know, kind of forgettable, you know? And that's the same thing with this film. Is It was another... It was just forgettable, you know what I mean? I mean, the plot and the story was just... Definitely forgettable. I couldn't remember much about it. So. But it, it's not as worse. I mean, there has been a whole lot worse I've watched. Tim McCabe, consider that I've watched how many now? There's been a lot. I mean, Submerge, Attack Forest, Today You Die, The Foreigner, Out of Reach, Belly of the Beast. There's just been so much. Uh, I I I thought there's been so much more worse than this though, and just it was just a meh movie. So, but Steven Seagal. I mean, there's the positives. There's been a couple. Of, there's been a handful of fights. A uh, sp couple of handful of fight scenes that I did not mind. I thought they were pretty decent. And there's been a couple lines of dialogue that Steven Seagal says I did get a chuckle out of. But also, there's sprinkled throughout the film, there's been more bad dubbing from Steven Seagal that's not his voice, once again, of course. Like, it been like many, like 15 of his movies where it's not his own voice. It's just, just once again, laziness. Seagal can't just do his own voice, you know, it's just pure laziness. <sighs> Although, there has been a couple of some fight doubles, you know, because, well, once again. Although there are some wide shots that shows, you know, that Steven Seagal can't did do it though, can do it himself. But like, but there has been like a one or scene or two. There has been a fight double. So, but the film, like I said, it's just forgettable. I mean, I mean, there, there. I mean, Steven Seagal is part of this, you know, because it was like, after like um, what was this after uh. Nine after after nine eleven, the um, they realized that the the narcotics were responsible for financing the majority of the terrorist cells. So they created this uh, task force called the ID IDTF, the International Drug Task Force, and Seagull was part of that. Is part of that. So, and he's and he's in Roma and he's in Romania, and he has uh, because um, it goes because it shows, okay. Before the credits go, it shows with Seagal doing this before they're going to do this fight scene, right? And, and it freeze frames, and then it goes to the credits. And we should find out that with that scene right there is going to, we're going to see that until the end of the movie. So it's like a time skip, like, the, the after the credits, it's going to be before that scene we see, we see at, the, at the, before, the start of the film before the credits go. But before, before all that, he had a partner that's killed, and, um... Then he get, ends up getting a new partner, which I'm like, this guy did not need to be here. His own, he did serve, serve no purpose, you know. And while it's going on, you have these two uh, bad guys. Well, one's not really a bad guy. He actually ends up kind of teaming up with uh, Steven Seagal. I mean, the, the kind of the good, you could say the good bad guy, you could say. He deals he deals with drugs, but he ends up, end up forming a, an alliance with uh, Seagal. Okay, you know. But they're like a bad guy. He does these home invasions where he uh, rapes, uh, and kills, pe rapes women and kills people. He, these home invasions, and the drug guy doesn't like that. So, I mean, I mean, the thing of the guy because the, the guy who does drugs, the say the good, the good bad guys, like you know, he does drugs. Drugs is one thing, but doing all the other things is not good, you know. And plus, you know, he has a has a wife and kid, you know, so he. Just want to get them involved, and and with Steven Seagal, when he gets a new partner, I mean, a lot of times he gets new. When he gets a lot of times in these movies, he gets a partner. They they get die, which lo and behold, because 
even even the guy even the guy says, "Oh, my wife is gonna have a kid," you know, and which I'm like, "Oh, what a surprise!" But you say that, then they're gonna die, right? Lo and behold, it does. The guy the guy does he gets shot in the neck. Um, but when the but when the, some of the hand like we with the the the, the partner the new partner with Seagal, um, there's been a couple of lines of dialogue I did like, you know, and. I mean, when uh, when Steven Seagal is talking to somebody, I think, um, was it the partner or another different guy? And Steven Seagal says, "I'm I'm I'm speaking Eng I'm speaking English I'm I'm speaking English." I that that I did get a chuckle out of, or when he's telling the new partner is like, you know, when, um, when this fight happens, like, you know, he gets kind of mad at the guy and says, "Hey, you didn't check this. You didn't check under the bed. You didn't check this. You know." So I mean, there's been a couple of lines that I did like. I did get a, did a get a chuckle out of from Seagal, but at the same same time, there's been some instances of bad ADR, bad dubbing from Seagal. I'm like, jeez, you know, every time I hear that, you know, it just takes me out of the movie. I mean, I mean, how many, just how many times, like, out of like 10, 15 movies I've seen where he just doesn't do his own voice, it just screams laziness. You know, it's not that freaking hard to do. But like some, but for the as the same for some of the handful of fight scenes I did I did not mind you know when does when because when he does a hand wrist flip you know and toss into a guy to a glass case and um, or an instance where although it has been a fight double because there's a guy on, there's a guy on a motorcycle where it cuts like say like this right where it's supposed it's supposed to be Stephen Seagal and it cuts like his head is cut off like this part right here right. And that's when, uh, and that's when supposedly Seagal knocks the guy off the motorcycle. But since it, it cuts the, the his head from up here, right? Because he can't, because it doesn't show his face. Because part of that's why we, since it doesn't show his face, we know that's that's, that's a fight double. And so yeah, but knocks the guy off the motorcycle, which of course I've seen that done better when Van Dam did it in Hard Target. You know, you know what we do is a. <sighs> Yeah, you know, flying kicked, you know, off the guy on the motorcycle, you know, and although it's a, it was a slow mo, but still, Van Dad did it himself. But yeah, I mean, like I said, Van Dam, his his track record of directed videos is far better than Seagal's, you know. Although there is not, Van Dam's not perfect. There's been some directed video films that he's done that I did not like, like Assassination Games or um, was the one called uh, Pound of Flesh. That's that was. Awful. And there was another. There was another one where he was on a train. Ugh, I forget though. But I mean, Van Damme's not perfect. There's been some of his direct video films I I did not I did not like. But a lot. But at the same time, there's films I did I did like. You know, which <laughs> makes him miles better than Seagal. But um. But I said with a fight double, you know, and and the guy who 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 and, and the drug and the drug guy who ends up you know being. Like the good guy teaming teaming up with Seagal, which okay, you know it's it's, a, it's not unusual that you know for a, a bad guy to be a turn to turn into a good guy, especially who's a drug dealer, teams up with Seagal, okay. And uh, because you because he wants to protect his wife, his wife and kid though, right? But ultimately the guy, um, you know the bad guys they find where his that guy is his family is, and the guy one of the drug the the, the Rapist, you say, who does the home invasion stuff, right? One of his guys shoots his wa the guy's wife. But ultimately, that guy gets shot by. Uh, it was um, it was it was Stephen Seagal was the the drug guy who did, did it. But um, I mean the whole I mean, the whole plot. I mean, besides a couple of handful of fight scenes, I mean. I did not like some lines. Some lines I liked, but the, the film it was, just, it was just a generic. You know, the plot was nothing new. And also, the funny thing is, with all, I forgot to mention, with all these all these directed video Steven Seagal films, there's no memorable. There's no memorable or good villains. You know, but of course, as compared to like his goal, his golden age of films. You know, we have films like, um, well, like Alfred Justice with William Forsythe, great villain. Um, of course, Under Siege with Tommy Lee Jones and Gary Busey. Even Cole Me too, I like. Um, Under Siege 2, Ever McGill, I liked, and uh, Eric Bogusen. 
Um, the Glimmer Man, I like Brian Cox. Uh, Bob Gunton, yeah. Fire Down Below, Chris Christopherson. Um, on Deadly Ground, uh, Michael Caine, Arlie Ermey, John C. McGinley, Billy Bob Thorne, they were good villains. So, but, but all those directed video movies, you know, all, there was there was just no memorable villains, you know. Maybe uh, say Justice. I mean Eddie Griffin. He's probably the well, because he's probably the most noble. Because Eddie Griffin, he's a much more memorable name than any of these guys I know of that appeared in any of these Steven Seagal movies. You know, of the directed video films like Eddie Griffin, because he's much more no uh, no name for me. You know, because he's a comedic actor. So. I guess Eddie Griffin, though. Although I, did, I, guess, I guess, like I said when I reviewed Urban Justice, I don't buy him playing a, a like a, a a a big baddie, you know, right? I don't buy him as this big baddie that from the other films I've seen him in, you know. I mean, yeah. Although like I said, it's different. Okay, different role, you know, comedic actor doing like a trying to be a big bad guy, you know. But at the same time, Eddie Griffin, I just don't buy him as a as a bad guy at all, though. I'm just saying the point is. But I could probably say he's the most known for me, I guess, because he's a uh, the name. His name is much more known for me than all these other, compared to all these other ones. And then ultimately, when it gets back to what we saw from the beginning of the movie before the credits go, just back into here, right? This bar fight, and with the guy, the bag, the main bad guy, the the rapist, whatever, and um, um. I like was I think I, I I did like this move that Steven Seagal does where he does like this he does like a psh, to the guy to the guy's face does like a psh, to, like, almost like a double a, cr like a crisscross slap attack basically. Huh. I mean it's not I, mean, I say it's like a slap attack though but it's like just like psh, you know and also it makes the guy shoots himself so by doing so but um. I mean that that was that, that was kind of a cool move, you know. That's one that I probably haven't seen Seagal do that before. But uh, but board race hell, man. I was just you know, like I said, I'm not overall mad at the movie. It's just it was just a bland, boring, generic. I mean, story does it is it was story we've seen done before. I mean, yeah, we get I get a, a couple of nice lines of dialogue that I like and um. That made me chuckle, and some decent uh, fight scenes I liked. But that's not. But that's not. Enough, that's not enough to save the movie. It's not. It's not enough to save the movie. I mean, this is from 2010. I mean, all this stuff. You know, I mean, this is the same year, which I'll, which I don't, um, which he later go the same year he he go to do start in Machete, with Danny Trejo. That was in 2010. Oh will I will I review it? Well, it was, that, that that one was released in theaters, so I'm just I'm I'm just right now I'm just doing his directed video movies, so I'll have to review Machete Machete another time though, but I'm just reviewing his directed video movies. Because Machete Machete got in theaters, so but though even though that fight between him and Danny Trejo was just beyond lame. And him trying to pull off once again, like in that movie, he was trying to pull off an accent, which I don't buy him at all. Like Driven to Kill, I don't buy him with a Russian accent. In Machete, I don't buy him whether he's trying to be like a Mexican accent or a Colombian accent. I just don't buy him with any accent at all, other than the fact in, except in, in Alfred Justice because you know a Brooklyn accent, a Brooklyn accent I can buy, but like in like trying to type a foreign accent, I don't buy him using. And that's like the fight between him and, and Danny Trejo in that film is just beyond lame. So that was gonna be that's gonna be a, that's gonna be a rant for another time though. But I'm just that that was released in theaters though. But I'm just reviewing because of this is his directed video movies. So, but but that was 2010. Hell, even the, the Expendables came out in 2010. That was even far better, you know. Of course, the, none none of his directed video films can touch the expect the first Expendables film. At least uh, uh, any of those, any of those guys like Dolph Lundgren or Stallone or Bruce Willis or Mickey Rourke, Jason Statham, or Jet Li. That they, they, they didn't have any bad dubbing at all. They never did any dubbing. I don't think you know. But yeah, but just Born to Race Hell. It was just just a, a meh movie. 
not a huge, it's not a big rant or a huge rant. It's just a small rant, you know. So I'm not a fan of it overall. So born to race house is like, bleh, meh, basically. It's just at least the same thing. I did. It's the same thing with the danger, a dangerous man. So, but anyway, that's born to race hell. Just, meh. But thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next movie review, and we'll see you next time. Later.